some people might say that Lutherans have a funny way of looking at baptism because, believe it or not, not all Christians believe that baptism is something that God does for you. Instead, they would view baptism as something that you do for God, that you would do for God out of obedience, and that baptism is just a, a symbol of the relationship that you have with God. People would say that baptism is a picture of the resurrection of Christ and a person's own spiritual renewal that has already happened outside of baptism. So why don't Lutherans share that view of baptism? And, and honestly, it's because the scriptures don't talk about baptism in that way. For, for instance, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 to 21, Peter, who is the inspired human author of this epistle, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so God himself says very clearly, baptism saves. Now, here's exactly what you write. God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, some people might get a little confused by that part where Peter says baptism, which corresponds to this. And so we need to clarify a little bit that Peter is not talking about baptism being a symbol. Although he's using an illustration, he's using the illustration of the flood in the Old Testament with Noah and his family. So basically what Peter is saying is baptism is, or that flood is related to baptism. All of us who have been baptized into Christ have been saved by God through this water, just as God saved Noah and his family through water. And now Peter seems to be very aware that, that this is a difficult concept to understand because we can't really comprehend it by our reason. And, and perhaps his words would be, you know, there'd be a danger that they'd be misused. And so he very quickly says, after baptism now saves you, what he meant. So he clarifies and says, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So basically, baptism connects us to Christ. And so Peter says, in essence, when I speak of baptism saving, I don't mean that it's the water, the immersion in the water, the cleansing of the body, or any of those outward things that save you. What I mean is that God is actually doing something for you through this sacrament. He's actually cleansing you so that when you stand before God's throne of judgment, you don't need to wonder whether you have done enough to be acceptable to him. You instead appeal to your baptism. You appeal to Christ because in baptism, you're connected to him. So the secret of baptism's power is not in the outward expression but in the simple biblical truth that, as our catechism says, baptism is not just plain water, but it is water including God's command and combined with God's word. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism, but with the word of God, it is a baptism. And so take comfort because your baptism gives you comfort. You have the comfort of knowing that you are God's own, not by virtue of your commitment, which, as we know, can go up. And it can come down. Some days we feel super Christian, other days we don't. Instead, you have comfort knowing that you are God's own, not by virtue of your own commitment to him, but by virtue of his commitment to you.